<laughs> Say hi. 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 Welcome to my new garden. Ha! Ah, look at this. How fucking amazing. I have a proper garden space. This is so exciting. I got the opportunity to come beyond these 80 acres and grow food. Live with the land, completely off grid. Mm, an answered prayer. Me and the dogs are just out for a walk right now. Come here, Tucker. Come meet the camera. Tucker. Tucker, come. Tucker, come. Hey. Practicing my deep voice. Tucker, hey. Oh, you gotta pee. Come here. Come here, boy. Say hi to the camera. That's Tucker. And you already know Dev. Come on, guys, let's walk. Come on. Over the winter, I met somebody that lived in the town of Coulterville. I had never heard of this town before, and uh, I'm not surprised that I haven't because it is so small. But it's super cute. It's an old mining town. And it has just one little store, one cafe, a deli, and that's pretty much it. They have a bunch of bars, but I haven't been in there yet. But they welcomed me to come stay on their land. And so I help out with the pigs and the garden. And me and Dev get to go explore. We were taken to a couple swimming holes. And oh, a swimming hole is... It's just my favorite place to be, really. Being surrounded by nature like this and not having any cell service has really allowed me the opportunity to just be, to sit there and watch how the pollen flies through the air Watch how the fish try and jump upstream. There's so much we miss when we're surrounded by distractions.
My days here in Coulterville are fairly slow, especially as the weather's getting warmer. The days can be really hot, so I don't want to spend much daytime outside unless I'm at the water. So I get up, I do my chores, I feed the animals, tend to the garden, and then I just come in and hang by myself pretty much. There is not a lot to do out here, so it's a lot of me time. We are 100% off grid, so we shower outside with the hose, we go to the bathroom outside, we have no toilet, we wash our dishes outside, I'm out living, baby. and just live a way that's closer to the land, and I love it. Over the past couple years, I've set myself up in a way where I could live this nomadic lifestyle, where I could be wherever I want, Crockett, Coulterville, at my cabin. I could be and spend time in nature, but still go back home and see my family, which is super important to me. You guys met James, right? The man that I moved in with me. Let's zoom in. Um, he is my roommate right now until the end of this month. And uh, I've known this man for about three and a half years. I've been his only friend. I take him to his doctor's appointments. Um, I take him out to lunch after that, uh, Dennis, do what he do, get his prescriptions, do the things that essentially family would do and he has no family and it's, it's sad. He has Parkinson's and dementia. The dementia comes from Parkinson's and so he's pretty incapable of doing much on his own and a few years ago he kind of just fell into my lap and I told him I wouldn't turn my back on him so I'm, I've been the main thing is just trying to find him a place to live and he's been in several places but anyways it's it's, it's not ideal the situation that he's in and he's for the most part, he's there in his mind. Like he's aware of his situation. He's aware that it's shitty. Um, he is a little, like the dementia makes him a little um, loopy sometimes. So sometimes I'm like, what, what are you saying? Oh yeah. Um, but the saddest part is like that other people that were in his life before he got this way. Like, it's like they act as if he's not there at all. Like, nobody, one person, and this just happened in the last month, one person in the three and a half years that I've known him has come to visit him. One person, and that was just last month. It's sad. 
And it's sad, like, no, we've gone to the bars, I've taken him to the bars to see his old friends, and everybody says hi, and they're happy to meet him, but nobody's ever come to visit him. And then it's, it's sad that, and I understand that he most likely lived his life in a way to where he, look at where he is, he has nobody. I could, because he doesn't have a pleasant attitude with me at all. He's not always nice. He's, he's a very negative person. And if you know anything about me, you know that I be positive. And so I understand that he played his role in his life. Only he can get him to the situation that he's in. But it's just sad. And that I trust that this message lands where it needs to. And if you have somebody in your life that's getting older check in with them don't don't forget about our elderly because they are still people they are still people they are human beings treat them as if they have years on you they tell us to respect our elders but then at some point we start treating our elders like children. Like I see the way people talk to them and treat them. And even myself, I'm not, I'm not guilt free of this. Like, yeah, just, just a friendly reminder to respect those that, uh, that are like James and just give them your love and, um, Holy smokes. Found out yesterday. What the fuck? What the fuck? Also this spring, my family and I looked at several properties. I believe I've said in earlier videos how we are on the hunt for acreage. We want lots of land that we could build a family compound and grow our food, live off the land, steward the land, love the land, connect with it, grow our families together and just be here together. We're really a close knit family. and. So this is really exciting for us. One of the houses we looked at, which was pretty cool, this one right here, is, is Kirsty Alley's property. <laughs> yeah. Our favorite though, or at least my favorite, was this one right here. This one speaks to me. It is 480 acres of just magic like you have meadows and you have pine trees and there's creeks and lots of space to do everything not only would this be a great place for us to all live together and raise our families together and have our kids run these trails it offers a huge business opportunity for us and if you know my mom and my sisters and I we like business we've had a couple businesses now and so this property just speaks to me so loudly and I'm doing all that I can to to get us on it in the beginning of June I went on a women's retreat near Mount Shasta. This is my second retreat that I've ever done and I just love them so much. It's such a grounding experience and connecting me back to myself and it's beautiful to see women connect in these ways. And this retreat 
it left me with a, a feeling of wanting to restart, uh, to get really connected to my spiritual path. So I came home and I created an altar and I sat at it every single day. I played my drum, I sang, I did mantras. And it's if you ever have the opportunity to go on a retreat, let this be your sign to take it, to do it, go for it. At the end of spring, I found out some heartbreaking news, but you're going to have to stay tuned to find out what it was. Until then, I'll just be here hanging out at the water. Say bye. Bye.